Yeah, so I get this a lot, particularly from pr uh, people in primary care of like, I don't know where to start. I don't have any power. I know, I kind of know what's broken and what needs to be fixed. Um, but it's just me. I don't have money. I hear that all the time. Nobody's going to pay for this. So, and then they're just tired and they give up and they just want to get back to work serving with patients. Um, so, you know, my, my advice often is, or, and also what I've observed with some, uh, emerging clinicians, primary care practices and organizations is they find an alignment of some vision of something they want to see. Uh, that they all agree on you know and even if it's just you and your practice it depends on your model and then once you know where you want to go you you can't unsee that <laughs> and so you basically start to systematically put the pieces together to get you there and uh and so we call that our you know in in the north america we say it's your north star like as long as you know where the north star is you go and then you gotta hustle. You gotta, you're like an entrepreneur. You, you get resourceful and you find money and you find people and you get people on board in your cause. And I tell you, when I've seen some very passionate primary care uh, clinicians go after a, a big idea, um, their impact is huge <laughs> for one person <laughs> who starts it. So, so that's what I encourage. And if you're not that person, if you don't have a vision, then um, I always recommend 10 to 15% of your time, whatever you call time, your budget, your minutes, you've got to be creating the future in that time. Every company in the whole world is going to be like this. You need to be crafting that time. If you're not, then all you're doing is protecting the past. And that's not going to serve anybody. You know, when it's a state funded uh, service, as healthcare is, uh, who decides, right? Um, so, I mean, I generally, I mean, I think we can have that conversation, but I don't know if that's the important one to have anyway, or, given how much opportunity and how much uh, waste and um, kind of lack of good accountable care exists. So I'd rather kind of have a conversation about what has to change in healthcare uh, instead of continuing to blame the patient. <laughs> Um, so sure, there'll be a lot of, um, or maybe some uh, unnecessary, uh, you know, demand. Um, but if we look at it in total, I don't think it's a big portion. So I don't see why we focus on it. Um, you know, if we flip that the other way, I believe 20 to 40% of all healthcare that's mediated by clinicians is wrong, duplicate, wasteful, and unnecessary. I'd rather have that conversation. Yes. And I think, you know, as a future strategist, my job is to look at the signals and the signs and see what's happening really around the world and locally, and then kind of translate that so we can, what I call future-proof, prepare and adjust how we need to do things to be um, either, maybe not ahead of the change, because it's very difficult in healthcare, uh, but at least to be on that current instead of fighting against it. So, you know, I'll talk about in my talk at this conference, you know, six big shifts. And, and I, you know, not, it's not whether I believe in them or not, they are happening. So it's going to be much more proactive and predictive instead of reactive. Uh, you know, they say moving from sick care to actual health care. Uh, it will be a lot more personalized and intelligent. And I would say most of what we do in healthcare today is still pretty crude and uh, it's one size fits everybody, which means it's one size fits nobody. So we really don't have an intelligence-based healthcare system. We have an evidence-based healthcare system, but that's not gonna serve going forward. It's gonna be um, you know, decentralized, this idea of care anywhere, instead of us expecting the patient to come to the care on our terms. That's gonna be a game changer, I think. Uh, and it's going to be much more empowered by uh, the people who have the biggest stake in the work we do, which is uh, people and their families, uh, in a way we've never seen before. And I, I don't think we're ready for that kind of change. So lots of change coming to really a business model that hasn't changed in over 150 years, and the business model no longer works. Yeah. So when people say, I, you know, I don't know if they'll ever say, I don't want to change, but they do in their behavior. We call those in my world, the preservatives. So you know how you can preserve pickles uh, that would just want to hold on to <laughs> what they know. And this is total human nature. So I'm not a basher of the massive change resistance and wow, is it massive in healthcare. Um, 
And I think we need to just uh, design for that, right? That's, you know, there's a normal distribution curve. I just think it's an abnormal curve when it comes to healthcare change, to be honest. The, the resistance and the, the producer interests that want to hold on to whatever power or money they have is very, very high because it's never been challenged, like I said, in 150 years. So uh, I think there's a way to, in, I hate the word buy-in. We use that a lot. Oh, we need to get people bought in. Uh, I'm really more thinking about how do we get people to be invested? And there's techniques to do that. There's a theory of change that we use because we're trying to change. You know, I, I work for a 110 year old company and our whole business model is changing, you know? So, so there are ways to do that. And then I think we need to be comfortable uh, to say, if you're not going to get on the bus, you're not going to the destination. <laughs> and that is, you know, a bit hard to do, but I think it's going to be necessary because patients are waiting. Flex. Because when you're taking inspiration from another jurisdiction, it doesn't mean you're saying, okay, replicate all the system structures that go back a hundred years and then you can achieve. It's more for um, inspiration exemplars. At the end of the day, the fundamentals of care have never changed. No matter where I go, when you get a patient and a clinician and, their, and the family of the patient, nothing is different for years. So that's the anchor, right? Is why are we all in this sector? Uh, healthcare is a calling. It's, it's not a business. It's not a cost center for government to manage. And so when you kind of get to the principles, I don't buy it. Mammals are the same, whether they're in Sweden or in Canada. I think um, we're finally getting to a point where uh, we're ready and we're able to design and deliver healthcare services based on the result we want. And I think there's gonna be a whole new accountability framework of you know, whether you're private or public or a doctor or a nurse or a pharmacist, this is the result we want for the population and the population helped design that result. And here's how much money we have to spend, figure it out. That's kind of in the US what they're calling accountable care. We call this value-based healthcare. I, I pick a word, it doesn't matter. I think the days of paying by service, by the pill, by the bed, by the visit, and not even knowing if it's working and still paying, those will be done. And if I was a leader and a policymaker, I would be demanding that of, you know, and a taxpayer <laughs> um, out of my service providers. And so again, I encourage clinicians is reinvent yourself in a value-based model, which means we're gonna get paid for our results, not for our activities. <laughs> so you can lead that way and then everybody else will follow.